This is the story of Lot Flight 5055. On the 9th of May 1987, a Lot Polish Airlines IL-62 was flying from Warsaw to New York. The plane was to head to San Francisco after refueling at New York. At 10.18 a.m., the plane took off from runway 33, bound for New York. Shortly after taking off from Warsaw, Flight 5055 was instructed to climb to 18,000 feet immediately. Military airplanes were training in the area, and to ensure proper separation, they had to climb very quickly. The controller said, climb immediately, I mean it, immediately. The pilots applied full power to comply with the controller's request, and so they started to climb. Nine minutes went by, and the plane was passing through 27,000 feet near the village of Libniki. Suddenly, an explosion rocked the plane, and something at the back had exploded. This was serious. The crew suddenly realized that they did not have their elevator controls anymore, meaning that they could not pitch the plane up and down. However, they did have pitch trim. In addition to that, two of their engines, the engines on the left-hand side, were out. They had little to no pitch control, and half of their engines were inoperative. The pilots started an emergency descent down to 13,000 feet. They now needed to figure out how to land the stricken plane. But before they could land the plane, they had to figure out where they could land it. The closest airport was Gdansk. But they had a problem. The plane at takeoff weighed 167 tons or 334,000 pounds. Up until this point, they had only used up 6 tons of fuel or 12,000 pounds of fuel. The landing weight for an IL-62 was 107 tons or 239,000 pounds. Due to issues that they were having with the electrical system, they couldn't start a fuel dump. Their next option was a military airport in Modlin. The airport could accommodate the IL-62, but its emergency services were not as good as Warsaw's. So, they decided to head back towards Warsaw, as it had better emergency service. At 10.53 a.m., another explosion rocked the plane. On the CVR, the crew could be heard dealing with the pressurization system of the plane. It had failed. They were frantically trying to make sense of what was happening. Their plan was to land from the south to mitigate the strong winds that were around the airport at the time. So, the plane made a 180-degree steep turn. The fire was now consuming the exterior of the plane. The plane left behind a dark streak of smoke across the sky. Their airplane started to fail them. The landing gears wouldn't work. The fuel dumps were erratic, and they had lost the pitch trim. That took away the little control that they had. As the plane flew over towns and villages, debris rained down on these towns, starting fires on the ground. The controller was doing all that he could to help get the stricken plane down safely. He said, start final approach about 11 kilometers from the runway. The crew replied with, we will do all we can. By some miracle, they were lined up with the runway. The controller said, wind is 290 degrees, 22 kilometers per hour. You are cleared for runway 33. But soon the plane was rising and falling, kind of like a sine wave. The plane pitched down for one last time. It impacted the forest in a slight left bank. The plane impacted the forest 3.5 miles from the runway at Warsaw. The last words spoken by the crew were recorded on the CVR. They said, Good night, goodbye, we're dying. None of the 183 members of Flight 5055 made it. The wreck was littered over the forests of Warsaw as a silent witness to the crash. However, if you listen hard enough, they did have a story to tell. For example, they found that in the final moments of the flight, most of the people had moved to the front of the plane this changed the center of gravity of the plane, and that was partly responsible for the final dive. In addition to that, they found the horizontal stabilizers of the plane warped. This had happened in flight, and this changed the aerodynamic properties of the plane, and that contributed to the dive. But what had caused the fire on board? Looking at the flight data recorder data, they saw that 12 to 15 seconds before the failure of engine number 2, the fuel consumption of the plane shot up for a bit, and after that, it went down. Soon after that, the engine failed. The failure of engine number 2 set off a bunch of other things. The cabin began to depressurize. The elevator system failed. In fact, by the end of the flight, the control column positions and the elevators were not mirroring each other, indicating that they were not linked. And on top of that, the uncontained failure of engine number 2 
damaged engine number one very badly. So what had caused engine number two to fail so catastrophically? They found that the low pressure turbine had failed because of the ball bearings that were used. The engines were designed to use 26 ball bearings inside the low pressure turbine, but this engine only had 13, half the required number. Remember how the pilots needed to climb out very quickly to 18,000 feet to avoid some military aircraft? Well, to do that, they pushed all four engines to max power. When they did that, the 13 ball bearings were doing the work of 26. They were being put through something that they were not designed for. This caused the ball bearings to heat up due to friction. They got hot, very hot. They reached 1000 degrees Celsius or 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. This caused the shaft that the low pressure turbine was connected to to become very weak and it eventually failed. The low pressure turbine was now no longer connected to the compressor and so the turbine could spin up to speeds that it was never designed for. The turbine spun faster and faster until the centrifugal forces ripped it apart. Shards of the broken blade peppered the rear section of the airplane, including engine number one. This is what started a fire in the baggage compartment of the plane. How do you end up having half the number of ball bearings that the design called for? The supply of ball bearings to the airplane manufacturer was delayed and so they built the engines with half the amount of ball bearings so that they could meet contractual obligations. Half the rollers meant that the generated heat would be concentrated in a smaller space and if that heat builds up, you have an uncontained engine failure. Now, you might be wondering, if they had a fire on board, why didn't they just land in Maudlin and get it over with? Yes, Warsaw had better equipment and that played a part in their decision making, but the crew were misled. As the flames started to spread at the back of the plane, their fire warning system had failed due to the damage to the electrical system. They were unaware of the fire. At first, they were under the impression that they had collided with something, maybe another plane, and so they hadn't really considered the possibility of a fire. At the time when they made the decision to go back to Warsaw, their plane was relatively controllable, and Warsaw's runway was the best option considering the winds at the time. The approach to runway 33 at Warsaw was obstacle free. Due to these reasons, they chose to go back to Warsaw, even though it meant flying further. The really sad thing is that, had they not applied full power, the ball bearings in engine number two probably would have held out for the flight and they would have made it back safely. So what do you think? Do you think that there's a version of events where flight 5055 could have made it back on the ground safely? Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I'll catch you guys next time. Stay safe.